What I will represent here on the blackboard here yeah, is an array composed of n telescopes. Yeah? And the telescopes can have any, any kind of shape. Yeah? So I just draw them as if they were banana. Yeah? OK. I only drew a limited number of these. Yeah? But in fact, the num their number can be n. So n apertures. Well, a single aperture, yeah, I may represent it as a0 xy. So this is the distribution of the complex amplitude yeah, in the pupil of a single telescope. Yeah. And now what I would like yeah, is to represent yeah, what is uh, the complex amplitude yeah, of the whole array. OK? So well, let's draw in blue. Yeah. So that it's nicer. The array of n apertures. And now I would like to express yeah, the distribution of the complex amplitude yeah, in this pupil plane, yeah, which is quite complex. Yeah. So I say, OK, it is a summation of small n equal 0. I start with 0. You will understand why in a moment to n minus 1. So I get a summation of n elements. Yeah, Of what? Well, I can write of a0 time x. And now I say plus n minus 1 times a over 2. Now, a is a distance between two consecutive elements. OK? And now I make minus n times a. So I pretend that this describes yeah, the distribution of the complex amplitude yeah, in this pupil plane. Yeah? So how many elements do I have here? You agree I have six elements. OK, six elements. Now, let's try to see whether this is OK or not. Yeah. So I remind you yeah, that a0 of xy yeah, would, in fact, yeah, indicate the position of one such element centered yeah, on x equals 0. Yeah? So this would be a0 of xy. But well, I have the same elements which have been translated, yeah? So I, I try to represent them here. Now, do you agree that the position x of one such element will be given by x is equal to, in fact, na, just the opposite sign of that number, minus n minus 1 times a over 2. OK, let's, let's try to see. For n equals 0, it means that x is equal minus n minus 1 times a over 2. If n is equal to 6, this will be minus 5 half times a. So minus 2.5 times a. And indeed, this is minus 1 half, minus 1 and a half, minus 2 and a half. So I'm here. This is n equals 0. And after what I do, well, I just add n a. So n equals 0, it's here. 1a, 2a, 3a, 4a, 5a, which is n minus 1, big n minus 1. Yeah? So you may check yeah, at home that this is a correct representation yeah, of the distribution of complex amplitude yeah, in the pupil plane. Now, OK, what I do, I say, OK, the Amplitude in the focal plane of such an interferometer, I know by the fundamental theorem, is a Fourier transform yeah, of A xy, which depends on the variables p and q. OK, the Fourier transform yeah, of this quantity will be the summation of the Fourier transform of each individual quantity. Yeah? So I may write this will be equal to the summation of n equals 0 to n minus 1 times the Fourier transform of a0 
Well, here I forgot something. I forgot to write comma y. Yeah, you always forget something, yeah? So a0 of x plus n minus 1 times a half minus n times a comma y. PQ. You agree? Don't hesitate, yeah, if you have a doubt. No? Okay. Now here, we see that this argument, yeah, represents a kind of translation of uh, the complex amplitude, yeah? So I will make use yeah, of the translation property of the Fourier transform, yeah? So I may rewrite this as being equal to summation of n equals 0 to n minus 1. Now, you remember it will be the exponentiation of i to pi multiplied by n minus 1 times a divided by 2 minus n times a, like that, times p, the variable p. Now I close the parenthesis. n of a0 xy. Uh, of the Fourier transform of A0 XY PQ. Yeah? So it's just the application of the translation property of the Fourier transform. Yeah. Okay, now I see that uh, when I make the summation of our small n, this does not depend on small n, only this depends on small n. So I may rewrite the result as follows, it will be equal to the exponentiation of i to pi times n minus 1 times a over 2 times p. So the 2 here, <coughs> and the 2 here simplify, Multiply by the summation of n equals 0 to n minus 1 of exponentiation of minus, okay, minus what? i to pi times n ap. Do you agree with that? Times the Fourier transform of A0 xy of PQ. Now, I would like to simplify yeah, this, and uh, I will just remind you here yeah, a result that summation of n equals 0 to n minus 1 z exponent n, so this is equal to 1 plus z plus z square plus z n minus 1. And this is simply equal to, well, z exponent n minus 1 divided by z minus 1. Yeah? So you may check this result. Yeah? It's See? So, this becomes equal to exponentiation of i pi n ap, like that, divided by exponentiation of i pi ap, multiplied by, now here I will have exponentiation of minus i to pi n ap minus 1, divided by exponentiation of minus i to pi times ap minus 1. Yeah? Now, it's easy to distribute yeah, this factor onto these two terms. I will get then that it's exponentiation of minus i pi and ap minus 1 divided by 
exponentiation of minus i pi a p minus 1. Yes? Oh, no. I forgot to distribute on this term, too. Yeah? So, minus exponentiation of i p n a p minus exponentiation of i p a p. Now it's correct, yeah? Now I see that the subtraction of these two terms, yeah, will give me, yeah, minus 2i sine divided by minus 2i sine, etc., etc., yeah? So here what I will get is that it will be the sine of pi n a p divided by the sine of pi times a p. And now, well, I have to multiply yeah, by the Fourier transform of a0 xy pq. And here also, multiply by the Fourier transform of a0 xy of pq. OK. Now, so this is expression of a pq. What we are really interested in yeah, is the intensity in the focal plane, yeah, because you can only measure intensity distributions and not uh, amplitude distributions. So IPQ is the square of what I've obtained here. So it's easy. Now I will particularize yeah, this to the case of a square aperture, a square aperture. Yeah? So you remember, well, I have to take the square of that. Yeah? And so it would be two times. So this is A, OK. So it was 2 times d square at the power 2, yeah, times the sine pi p d over pi p d square times the sine of pi q d by qd square, like that. And now you will take the square of this, yeah? So now, uh, here it was 1. It's for one square aperture, yeah? yeah? Not 2, 1. And now you multiply by the square of that, yeah? So it will be the sine of pi n ap. square, and here sine pi a p square, like that. Now I do the following. I divide here yeah, by pi a p square. So I multiply here by pi a p square. Now I still divide here by n square. So here I have to put an n. And this finally is the expression, the expression, yeah? I obtained for the intensity distribution in case I use an interferometer composed of n elements, yeah? Well, in this case, uh, square apertures, yeah? Now I will show on a diagram, yeah? How the intensity distributions, distribution will look like. So essentially along the p direction, yeah? So this is the p direction. Here I represent the i well, of pq, and the q would go like that. So it would be something like that, yeah? When p equals 0, q equals 0, this is 1. This is 1. This is one, this is one, yeah? So what remains is the nd square at the power two, yeah? So it's the square, in fact, yeah, of the total surface of the, of the array, array, yeah? So more you have elements, yeah, well, you'll have a better sensitivity. So, okay, 
this maximum value here will be n d square to the power 2. Now, in fact, this will be the square of sine cardinal, yeah, going like that. And now I'm interested yeah, by, by the weights yeah, of the central element, yeah, which will define the angular resolution of my interferometer. Yeah? Now, I know that this minimum here will occur when, in the sign, I will have a pi argument, and here minus pi, which means that whenever pi n ap is equal to plus or minus pi, I will have a zero value, yeah? And this will provide me, yeah, the way to define the angular resolution of my interferometer. So I find here that p is equal to plus or minus 1 over n times a. But p, I remind you that it is equal to x prime over f times 1 over lambda. So I have here that first delta p is equal, as before, yeah, 2 divided by n a. And therefore, delta x prime over f is equal to 2 times lambda over n a. And well, this is the angular resolution yeah, of my interferometer. Yeah? So it's proportional to the wavelengths and divided yeah, by the total length of my interferometer, n times a. Okay, so this defines the angular resolution of my interferometer. Now I see that I should account, yeah, for so I have already accounted, yeah, for this dependence, yeah. Okay, now I would like to account for this one. Well, this one is easy. It's also a, a thing function. Something going like that. And this is, in fact, the response function due to a single square aperture. Yeah? But now, in addition, yeah, well, this is along the Q direction, yeah, which means that along the Q direction, I have no interference, yeah, but I also have this very broad peak. But now, this is an interesting quantity, yeah? because I see that whenever this is equal to 0, well, there is a peak. Yeah? So whenever pi ap, so pi ap is equal to pi, so it means whenever p is equal to 1 over a, so maybe here I will have uh, 1 over a, 2 over a, 3 over a. Here, well, I will have something like that, yeah. Secondary peaks, yeah. Secondary peaks, yeah. And well, this, if you would take, yeah, the power spectrum, yeah, of the, this intensity, you would see that this gives rise, yeah, to information, yeah, at different special frequencies, yeah due to the spacing between two interferometers, yeah. Okay, so, that's the end of the demonstration. So it's not difficult, yeah? You've seen that I'm just applying, yeah, uh, Fourier transform properties. Yeah. Now, I come back here to one of the last view graphs, this one. So you see, this was the array we have considered, yeah? And this is, yeah, the response function that I've drawn, yeah, on the blackboard. And what we have established here for the case of an optical interferometry would be valid for a radio interferometer, it's the same. So in particular, yeah, well, these are diagram antenna, yeah? And now comes uh, the ideas of the projects for the students, yeah? Yeah, okay? So the idea is that First part, yeah, 
you consider an array where the apertures here can be either square apertures or they could be also circular apertures. Yeah? And you may either observe a star at the zenith, but you also could observe a star, yeah? Which is slightly inclined along the line of sight, yeah, as it would occur, yeah, with a radio tele or with, with a optical interferometer, yeah. And the, the unit vector, yeah, indicating the orientation of the star, yeah, is b over f c over f one, yeah. So remember, we have addressed that problem, yeah, for a single aperture, yeah, assuming that the star was not at the zenith but was oriented along a different, different angle of view. Then after, what you could do, yeah, oh. Now you could orient yeah, all your individual elements in the direction yeah, of that star. Yeah? Then what, what would happen, in fact? Yeah? Do you agree that the star yeah, sees this array as something like that? Yeah? It, it sees its projection. Yeah? So the baselines are not the same anymore. Yeah? There is a cosine yeah, which enters. And then there are delays yeah, the, for which you have to to bring a correction, yeah? And after, well, the third case, yeah, is that you could consider that the telescopes are oriented along that direction, but the star is oriented to along another direction, yeah? And see what happens. So I said for the case of a square aperture or the case of a circular aperture, yeah? So it's very simple. So using a Python program, yeah, just to make something, you know, individual, and uh, and then we interact by email, yeah, and that's all. So now, if you have questions, yeah, we finished, yeah.